Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about yesterday's uh, beginning of the NBA preseason. The only game I was able to catch was the Blazers-Kings game, so that's the only one I'm going to talk about, obviously. But it was a lot of fun, and I'm excited to discuss it. Before I get too far into it, though, I want to remind you all to leave a like and subscribe. I've been appreciating all the support that I've been receiving lately, and I hope to see that continue. I also want to say that I recently... Uh, made a Twitter account and I'm going to be tweeting uh, all NBA season about what I'm watching in these games so go ahead and follow me on there I'll leave the link in the description. Without further ado let's talk about last night's game. Uh, before we really do that though I just want to say I love the beginning of each NBA season because it's a time of hope for every NBA franchise. Obviously, some franchises have a bit more hope, like if you're a fan of the Lakers, you have more hope than if you're a fan of the Knicks. Sorry, Knicks fans. But every NBA team has a chance to talk themselves into their team taking a big step forward. Now, not obviously not every team meets their goals for the season, but the beginning of the season is always a time for optimism, and I think that that's a really special time of the year. It certainly shows in this game where the Blazers are hoping to take a step forward and really establish themselves as a true contender to win the Western Conference, and the Kings are hoping to see big steps forward from their young players like De'Aaron Fox, Marvin Bagley, and uh, Buddy Heald. Uh, so I just love this time, I love this, uh, this hopeful season, and I'm uh, really excited to get it underway. I did think that it was a little annoying and a bit perfect that 2 minutes and 11 seconds into the game we had a uh, official review where they spent a couple minutes at the monitor to check out and away from the play foul. I get it, it's their job, they have to look at it, but this is one of the things about the NBA that bugs me and is kind of hard to watch as a fan, and I thought that it was a bit symbolic that that was pretty much the first thing that I saw for this NBA season, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I just thought that it was a bit funny, and I thought that I would point that out, that that was something that made me laugh, but uh, yeah, let's talk about the actual basketball stuff. Um, obviously, the story of this game has to be Harry Giles. We saw Giles have a terrific game. Uh, I was calling it the Harry Giles revenge game before it even started, telling my dad about how Sacramento pretty much decided they didn't want this dude uh, on a rookie scale contract. They declined his fourth year player option prior to last season. And he ended up walking, uh, signed a deal with the Portland Trailblazers for the biannual exception, I believe. And oh boy, does that look like a good signing now. Giles finished with 18 points, 14 rebounds. Three steals, two blocks, and he shot 8 for 13 from the field. Really nice night from him. He finished the ball at a high level at the basket. Uh, obviously flashed his athleticism on those impressive dunks he had, but like I said, the three steals and two blocks were equally impressive as we saw him utilize that athleticism on the defensive end of the floor to create plays, which allowed the team to get out in transition, where obviously he was able to finish... Uh, with some entertaining. I loved it when he brought out the windmill. I don't care if it's at the end of the game. I mean, Richard Jefferson kind of poo-pooed on his, on, his, uh, on his finish by saying, a windmill when you're up by 20, whatever. I mean, come on, RJ. You were a player. Like, let this young guy have some fun. It's the preseason. Who cares? But uh, I genuinely thought that the energy that he brought on defense, uh, like I said, the three steals and two blocks, but he also took two charges late in the game. One of them was on a shot contest where he went straight up, uh, took some contact, and uh, was able to draw a charge call there. And then on the next one, he pretty much just put his body out there and uh, let the offensive player, I can't remember who it was, Justin James maybe, uh, he took the took the hit, went down, and it was a clear charge. So I really liked what Harry Giles did tonight, and I'm very interested to see if he is able to really win rotation minutes for this team. It's clearly a fronted front court. You're going to have Robert Covington and Derek Jones Jr. As, as the starters. 
off the bench, you have Carmelo Anthony, Zach Collins. Uh, those are the clear two. It depends on if you consider Rodney Hood a three. Uh, then that's another player who's going to be taking up rotation minutes in the front court. But at the backup center position, unless Zach Collins transfers back to being more of a five than a four, it's probably going to be Ines Cantor, and I certainly thought that Harry Giles looked better than Cantor did tonight. Cantor ended up putting up a decent stat line just because he's a humongous human being, and he was able to grab 11 rebounds when he was playing inside against like Jabari Parker and Frank Kaminsky. So I don't necessarily think that that is anything too special uh, from Cantor. And on the offensive end, Giles certainly looked better. On defense, he was playing with more energy. So I'm excited to see if um, Harry Giles is able to win those backup center minutes playing behind um, uh, Yusuf Nurkic, of course, at the center position. Next thing to talk about here is Carmelo himself. Uh, finished with 21 points on 8 for 13 shooting, 3 for 3 from the free three-point line. Uh, really terrific night for Carmelo. Uh, he came off the bench and was shooting from the get-go, uh, knocked down a three right away, had a couple possessions where we saw the patented Carmelo face up, jab step, rise up and shoot it over the defender. I did get a little frustrated. Uh, I thought that there were a couple shots that it's like just boneheaded, like, come on, Melo, why are you shooting that? Um, but he was able to score at a pretty high level. He was really efficient, so... I genuinely think that this is a good game from Carmelo Anthony, and if he's able to produce at the same level, he's certainly going to be in the conversation for sixth man of the year in this upcoming season. Derek Jones Jr. is the next guy here that I want to talk about. I'm really excited to see what he can bring to this team. Obviously, on defense, he's terrific. Yeah, he's able to use that length and athleticism to be a really above-average defender on the wing. With him, the question has always been his jump shot, and tonight, it looked pretty good. He took two three-pointers in the flow of the offense, looked confident, rose up, and knocked them both down. If that's a true indicator of what we're going to see from Derek Jones this year, then he's got a chance to be a real ceiling raiser for this Trailblazers team. I didn't think that this was a team that could beat someone like the Lakers because, well, they did add Robert Covington, who could help them out there. I didn't think that they necessarily had the on-ball defense to match up with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. But if Derrick Jones Jr. is able to stay on the court by shooting it at a higher level in the postseason, he is probably the best option there to have on the ball guarding those high-level uh, wing-slash-big players. So I'm really excited to see what he can do this year, and I'm hopeful that that jump shot that he showed is a genuine implication of what we could see from him this year. Uh, next, I will get a little bit of Kings talk in here. Uh, I'm not a Portland fan, just rocking the jersey because I like Dame quite a bit. And hey, I was like, it's the first game of the season. I'm going to wear a jersey. Who cares? So uh, I'm mostly just talking about the Trailblazers more than the Kings because they were clearly the better team and are the more interesting team to talk about. But Buddy Heald did have a pretty good game for the Kings this uh, last night. 23 points on 8 for 17 shooting, 5 for 11 from 3. I get that a lot of people are saying they're going to miss Clay Thompson this year, and I'm going to miss Clay quite a bit too. But Buddy Heald is pretty much the closest you're going to get to Clay. Tonight, he had those 23 points, like I said, and he probably did not take too many more than... 23 dribbles the whole game. So it's that type of just catch and shoot scoring where every once in a while you'll see him do a ball fake and sidestep and shoot a three. But it's mostly just that perimeter shooting. And Buddy Heald uh, had a pretty good night tonight. I also thought that he played pretty hard on the defensive end. We saw him make a couple solid plays where uh, he was able to knock the ball away and uh, either knock it out of bounds or create a loose ball opportunity. So uh, I thought Buddy Heald was pretty solid and definitely looked like the better of the two young Kings players that we saw play, although Buddy Heald isn't that young. He's like 28, uh, which just shocks me because it 
feels like he's still in like his third year. But anyways, uh, De'Aaron Fox didn't look so good tonight. 10 points and 6 assists on 3 for 12 shooting, 1 for 7 from 3, 3 for 6 from the line, and he had 4 turnovers. I'm not too concerned though. It's one game and obviously you're pretty rusty as it's the first preseason game. So who really cares, but I do think that the shooting is a little bit scary if you're a Kings fan. He certainly wasn't afraid, had a lot of confidence in taking that pull-up jumper, but you would have liked to seen it gone in more than one out of seven times, and the turnovers also weren't great. A couple of them were just him getting stripped as he tried to go to the basket. So that wasn't terrific, but... I still think that De'Aaron Fox is probably going to have a really good, well, I don't even know. It's one game. I, I Don't overreact to this. Next player to talk about is Dame. I think I have to touch on Dame and CJ very briefly here. Like, they played like Dame and CJ, obviously. It was limited minutes, and uh, Dame probably didn't have his best game. Uh, had 15 points on 4 for 7 shooting, 3 for 6 from 3, 4 for 4 from the line. Had a three-point shot that looked like it was going to be an and one get flopped and ended up being an offensive foul called on him after Luke Walton challenged it was a successful challenge um but I, I guess a little thing I could touch on with Dame here is I'm really impressed with how good he looks coming off of dribble handoffs that wasn't necessarily something I had always noticed about his game obviously when you think about Damian Lillard you think about the pull-up shooting first uh, but he actually looked really good coming off of those dribble handoffs. It looks like something that Terry Stotts is going to use a lot because they were running them with players like uh, CJ and Gary Trent and CJ Ellaby. I can't even just say CJ because there's two CJs on the Blazers now. But um, uh, he looked really good in those dribble handoffs. That's where he had the offensive foul called on him. He also knocked down another three-pointer off of one of those, so, uh, really good game, or, I don't know, not really good game for Dame, but he played like Dame, knocked down some crazy shots, uh, one was from the logo, got fouled on the half-court shot, which was pretty fun, uh, this Trailblazers team is certainly gonna put points up, and they're gonna be one of the more fun teams to watch this year. CJ McCollum had 18 points on 7 for 16 shooting and 2 for 5 from the three-point line, which may just be the single most CJ McCollum stat line I've ever heard. Uh, most of that scoring, it felt like, came in a stretch during the second quarter, or maybe it was the third quarter, I can't... I think it was the third quarter, where Dame was out of the game and CJ was functioning as the uh, primary ball handler. Uh, he got into a rhythm, started knocking down those mid-range jumpers that he's so efficient at, actually had one of his rare drives, and he was able to turn it into an and one with a nice little floater-type shot at the rim. Uh, CJ McCollum, Damian Lillard, yeah, you know what you're getting with those two guys. They were pretty good tonight, but I'm excited to see them as one of the better duos in the entire NBA uh, for this upcoming year. Finally, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this for the whole season when I talk about these games, but I'm certainly going to do it for the preseason because that's when we really see these guys play quite a bit. So a new thing I'm going to add into these videos is a rookie check-in. And in today's rookie check-in, uh, we have four guys to talk about, four rookies that got minutes. It starts with Tyrese Halliburton, uh, who obviously was the 12th pick for the Kings in this past draft. Uh, Halliburton had five points, three rebounds, two assists, two steals, and he also took a charge. Obviously, that stat line is nothing too flashy, especially considering he actually played pretty solid minutes, like 25-ish. But I thought that he played really good defense, was the best option that the Kings had to throw at Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum for large portions of the game. When CJ got on that hot streak that I was talking about before, uh, Halliburton was actually the guy that Luke Walton turned to for that matchup, and I thought that he did a pretty good job defensively. He was also able to uh, jump a passing lane and also had a strip steal that both turned into fast break opportunities for the Kings. So, uh, pretty solid game defensively for 
Uh, Halliburton, not too much offensively, but that'll come. He's a guy that plays within the flow of the offense, and tonight he just didn't have too many opportunities to score. I liked what I saw from him, though. He looked like he is ready to play in the NBA, which certainly cannot be said for his counterpart on the Trailblazers, C.J. Ellaby. Ellaby actually played a lot, got 29 minutes, and in those 29 minutes, for large portions of it, he just didn't look comfortable out there, didn't look like somebody uh, who belonged on the same court as a lot of the other players that he was out there with. But uh, he actually did show some signs of intrigue in, in garbage time minutes, albeit. But he knocked down a nice uh, pull-up jumper from the mid-range and shot a pull-up three with some confidence as well. Uh, I don't know too much about C.J. Allaby. He wasn't a player that I watched too much tape on prior to the draft. But overall, from what I saw tonight, it's going to take some time for him to develop. But because he's a wing who can score the ball at a high level, perhaps uh, he'll end up being a rotation guy down the line for a team. Jamius Ramsey got the most minutes, or got, or made the most of his minutes more than the other Kings second rounder, uh, Robert Woodard, but neither of them did much. Ramsey had five points, knocked down a three, and finished at the rim once as well. But uh, they both were limited to only garbage time minutes, and neither of them necessarily made a huge impact. Robert Woodard shot an absolute brick of a three-pointer and then allowed a wide-open three-pointer to Robert Covington on the other end, so that wasn't great from him. But overall, neither of these two guys were able to make much of an impression due to their limited playing time. This was a fun game to watch. The Harry Giles revenge game was uh, certainly an interesting storyline to follow along with, and he had a terrific game finishing with 18 and 14, but... It wasn't a terrific game. The Blazers pretty much had control from the end of the first quarter on. It really did get my juices flowing, though. I'm excited for NBA this season, and I can't wait to watch uh, my Bucks play tomorrow because obviously that's my favorite team. But let me know in the comments what you thought of this game. Uh, how good do you think the Blazers can be? Based off of what we saw from Robert Covington, who also had a good game, I just didn't talk about it, Gary Trent had a good game where he flashed some off-the-dribble uh, shot-creating ability, which was certainly intriguing to me. Uh, Derek Jones Jr. had a good game. Harry Giles had a good game. How good do you think this Trailblazers team can be? I would say that their ceiling is probably as a team that could make a run to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, like I said before, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I think that's going to be it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all again very soon.